deep waters of the Bay of Bengal, 50 kilometers off Kakinara in Andhra Pradesh on the east coast of India. Nearly a kilometer below the sea level, and then almost another two kilometers below the sea bed. Reliance had struck the world's largest gas discovery for that year. In fact, in scale and size, it was the biggest find in almost 30 years. Knowing the gas was there was one thing. Getting it up and ready for the people of India was filled with multiple challenges. Some known, many unknown. It was an area with no known infrastructure to begin with. The conditions here were hostile for most part of the year. There was an acute shortage of professionals, equipment, material and services. Under normal conditions, according to global experts, it would be a good 10 years before the gas could be made available to the people of India. Given India's immediate energy needs, 10 years seemed like eternity. Ready to shoulder the responsibility, Reliance picked up the gauntlet and set itself the target of delivering the gas in six years. A lot of people said at that point of time and uh, that what we were doing is too risky. We don't know, we are like babes in the wood and you know, this is not for the weak hearted, etc, etc. In fact, I remember his conviction became stronger. He said, if everybody thinks it is difficult, we got to do it. It was a race against time and the vagaries of the entire ecosystem. The best minds at Reliance were assigned to the challenging task. Two teams were set up exclusively for onshore and offshore. Offshore, there was a need for a highly sophisticated yet out-of-the-box solution. We wanted a subsea architecture which could stand the rigors of harsh environment and work continuously and efficiently for the next 25 years or so. The gas from a group of up to six wells would flow through a manifold. From six such manifolds to a deep water pipeline end manifold, the DW PLEM. The deep water PLEM weighs around 450 metric tons, almost as much as a Boeing 747. Then the gas would move up via two 24 inch pipelines to the CRP the control and riser platform. From here it would be transported to the shore via three 24-inch pipelines over a distance of 26 kilometers through the Godavari River. The landfall point is where the gas pipes come up from below water level onto land for the first time and continue for another five kilometers before reaching the onshore terminal. Onshore terminal is basically houses the facilities where the gas produced from offshore is received, treated to make it suitable for transporting through a pipeline and distribution to the consumers. In the Bay of Bengal, advanced rigs began drilling and completing development wells at water depths never before attempted in the Indian subcontinent to tap the gas reservoirs. Using the latest seismic techniques, such as 3D high-resolution surveys and inversion studies for reservoir characterization. Although the nearest port was just about 30 kilometers away from the site, the access route was filled with obstacles. Reliance constructed a dedicated jetty for material movement at the landfall point. This jetty was capable of providing berth to vessels and barges, bringing in the largest of skids and equipment. Then, a 10 meter wide, 5 kilometer long, dedicated road was specially constructed between the jetty and the onshore terminal site for quick and easy transportation of unloaded consignments. The new challenge for the onshore team was to find skilled hands to work during a construction boom time in India. Getting skilled labor at a remote location with restricted social contact and peak summer temperatures hitting 45 degrees Celsius proved to be the bigger challenge. People-friendly reliance policies managed not only to motivate workmen to join, but also retain them. Elsewhere, across the world, fabrication of specialized offshore equipment was going on in full swing. 
everything had to be ready for dispatch to the offshore site in India, on time. Christmas trees, manifolds, even the CRP and its jacket. Offshore, a fleet of specialized construction barges and vessels was employed to put all the equipment into place. The largest fleet ever deployed in India at a single offshore location. Each vessel designed to tackle a specific phase of the installation. Across the seas, the CRP was steadily taking final shape. Once at the point of installation, without much ado, the jacket was made to slide off the barge onto the shallow seabed. Then one of the world's tallest cranes, the DB-101, moved into action to lift and upend the jacket. The task was achieved with precision, speed and dexterity make the gigantic CRP stand tall and erect, like a metallic man-made iron. Further offshore, several large diameter pipes were strategically suction anchored into place. These mammoth, almost invisible columns would now provide a permanent foundation to the enormous, heavy-duty subsea structures such as manifolds. One by one, the manifolds were put in place. As were the Christmas trees. All the deep sea installations get their power from the umbilicals. The umbilicals are the true lifelines of the entire system. Below the sea, the ROVs were hard at work with the last mile connections. Connecting the jumpers to hook up the manifolds as well as the Christmas trees with the well flow lines. Now it was time to check the entire system thoroughly for leaks and gas tightness, together with the overall integrity of the entire system. The 1st of April 2009 was a day of reckoning and reliance. The main valve was thrown open. Gas, the life-giving energy for India, began to flow. With all systems working as envisaged, this was the textbook start-up. It will place Reliance well on the path to be a global energy major and India well on the road to energy security. The largest and the most complex deep sea greenfield project in a single location. Built in a record time of about six and a half years. Everyone at Reliance and every Indian will take pride in the knowledge that India had indeed done it. <laughs>